Okay, uh, the last talk in this session is on private circuits with quasi-linear randomness by Vipul Goyal, Yuval Ishai, Yifan Song. Um, the talk is recorded and enjoy. Hello everyone, my name is Yifan Sang. Today I'm happy to introduce our work, Private Circuits with Quasi-Linear Randomness. This is a joint work with Vipul Goya and Yuval Yishai. The notion of private circuits was introduced by Yishai, Saihai, and Wagner in 2003. It is a simple abstraction of leakage-resistant computation. Informally, a private circuit should be secure against leakages of t where values chosen by an adversary. In this work, we consider both the stateless and stateful private circuits, which we give details as follows. Suppose f is a function that we want to compute. It takes as input x and output y. A stateless private circuit for the function f contains three parts. The first part is an input encoder, which encodes the input x to x hat. Then a circuit C takes as input x hat, computes the function f, and outputs the encoded result y hat. Finally, an output decoder decodes y hat and outputs y. The security requires that any PORs should reveal no information about the input x to rule out trivial solutions in which the encoder or the decoder compute the function f directly, we consider the canonical encoder and decoder by default. Concretely, the canonical encoder splits each input bit into t plus one additive shares, and the canonical decoder computes each bit by adding up a group of t plus one bits. A stronger variant of private circuits referred to as leakage tolerant private circuits does not have input encoder or output decoder. The security requires that any t wires review at most the same number of input and output bits. With the leakage tolerant solution, we can obtain a leakage resilient private circuit by using an encoding scheme that is secure against t program tags, such as the canonical encoder. In particular, we can also jointly encode all input bits with less randomness. In the stateful model, the circuit maintains an internal state. In each epoch, the circuit takes a public input x and outputs the result y in clear. A concrete example is an encryption circuit where the internal state is a secret key, the input is the message we want to encrypt, and the output is the cipher text. The security requires that in every epoch, any t where values should reveal no information about the internal state. The notion of private circuits is attractive for theoretical study due to the simplicity of its model in the sense that the computation model is just binary circuits and the class of leakage functions contains all sets of t where values in the circuit. A lot of works have shown that we can bootstrap from this minimal notion of private circuits towards resisting more powerful leakage classes, such as AC0 leakage or bounded communication leakage. On the other hand, private circuits gain popularity as a practical method for higher order masking countermeasures that protect embedded devices against realistic set channel attacks. In this work, we are interested in the randomness look complexity of private circuits, which is a natural theoretical question for this notion. The study of randomness complexity can also be motivated by the fact that generating fresh randomness is expensive in practice. In the scenario where the randomness is provided as a part of the input, reducing randomness complexity means reducing the size of the input. In some cases, this can be translated to an improvement 
in the communication complexity. For example, when we build a leaky resilience hardware for proof verification, the prover may be responsible to provide fresh randomness used in the hardware. Therefore, in this work, we consider the following question. How many random bits do we need to securely compute a function with circuit size S against T probing attack? The work SWO3 gives, first gives a feasibility result based on MPC protocols. It requires T square random bits for each multiplication of gates which adds up to t squared times s random bits for the whole circuit. The work IKL plus 13 introduces the notion of robust random generators. Very informally, it is an implementation of a PRG such that the implementation is secure against problem attacks. Relying on robust PRGs, the authors achieve t cubed times log t s random bits which is almost independent of the circuit size. A recent work, CGC20, further reduces the randomness complexity to t squared times log ts. We will provide more details about their techniques later. In this work, we show that any function computed by a Boolean circuit of size s admits a t private circuit with a canonical encoder and decoder which uses out of t times log t as random bits. This represents a fact of t improvement compared with the previously best known results. We also extend our results to the following scenarios. First, when using a random efficient encoder instead of the canonical encoder, we achieve out of t times log t as overall random bits. This is optimal up to logarithmic factors. Second, we show that same bound applies for leakage tolerate private circuits. And finally, we also show that the same bound applies for the stateful model of private circuits. Here, the random complexity is for every epoch. In the following, I will first discuss the construction in previous works, analyze why their constructions fail to obtain further improvements, and give the general idea of our construction. The first construction is given in SWO3. The idea is to compute an additive sharing for each variable value. For example, for variable value x, the goal is to compute x1, x2 to xn, such that their summation is equal to x. In this way, any t shares are uniformly random and independent of x, and any t probing attacks reveal no information about the input. Now the problem is reduced to evaluating addition gates and multiplication gates. For an addition gates, we can simply add up the two input additive sharings. For multiplication gates, we first compute the multiplication between every two shares, one from each input additive sharing. Note that the summation of this n square multiplication results is equal to x times y. We then transform the multiplication results to an additive sharing of x times y. The construction in ISWO3 requires to consume out of t square random bits for each multiplication gate, resulting in out of t square times s randomness complexity. To reduce the randomness complexity, the work IKL plus 13 considers the randomness locality of a circuit. Concretely, a circuit C makes an L local use of its randomness if each variable value uses at most L random bits. For example, say somewhere W is equal to X times Y plus C plus R1 times R2 times R3 plus R4. Here, X, Y, Z are input bits of C and R1 to R4 are internal random bits. Then the where W uses four random bits. Now, for a set of t where values, they together use at most L times t random bits. Then we can replace the fresh random bits by L times t wise in independent random bits without changing the distribution of the where values in W. 
Ideally, this allows us to reduce the random complexity to L times T times some logarithmic factor in the circuit size. However, one problem of this approach is that we need to use a circuit to implement the generating process of this random bit. In particular, the circuit of PRG may be vulnerable to probing attacks. To overcome this issue, IKL plus team proposes the notion of robust PRGs. Informally, a robust PRG is a circuit implementation of a PRG that is resilient to probing attacks. As a result, we can use a robust PRG to repair the desired random bits. The work IKL plus 13 shows that the randomness locality of the basic construction is T square. Therefore, we need to use T cube wise independent random bits. The authors also show the existence of a robust PRG that uses out of T cube times log TS random bits. As a result, they obtain a T private circuit that uses the same number of random bits. A recent work, CGC20, reduces the random locality of the basic construction to T, leading to a factor of T improvement in the randomness complexity. We know that this approach appears to be difficult to beat the T-square bound. Intuitively, the random locality of a private circuit cannot be smaller than T. Otherwise, an adversary can probe a wire value and all random bits used for this wire value, which may leak information about, about the input. Then the random source should be at least T square wise independent, which requires at least T square random bits. Our work does not follow this approach for de-randomization. Here's an overview of our idea. In the first step, instead of using additive shear rings to protect their values, we choose to use a T private encoding scheme to protect their values. We show that such a T private encoding scheme only needs tail of out of T random bits. Here, the tail of big O notation omits the logarithmic factors. In the second step, we show that the computation of the T private, T private encoding scheme can be reduced to constructing a leakage tolerant XR gadget. Finally, we construct a randomly sufficient leakage tolerant XR gadget, which only uses tail of all of T random bits, which solves the problem. We first discuss our auto construction, a T private circuit via XR gadgets. Suppose tail C is a circuit that computes a function F. In S sub the O3, the construction compares such a circuit by computing an additive sharing for each variable. value. Our idea is to use a strong T-wise independent PRG to protect these values. Concretely, suppose G is a strong T-wise independent PRG that takes U1 to UM as input and outputs R1 to RS. We mask each variable value WI by RI. Then the goal is to compute WI, X, or RI for all I. Together with U1 to UM, this can be viewed as an encoding of the bare values. Note that by the property of a strong t wise independent PRG, any t bits are uniformly random, revealing no information about the input. To compute each mask speed, we further require G to be linear. In this way, each output bit is a linear combination of the input bits. For example, Ri may be equal to U1 plus U3 plus U4. We use the support of Ri to denote the set of these random bits. Observe that Wi, X, R, Ri, and all bits in the support of Ri can be viewed as an additive sharing of Wi. At the first glance, it may appear similar to the idea in SWO3. However, there are two key differences. First, the number of shares may vary for different variables. This is because 
the number of shares depends on the size of the support of Ri, which may be different. Second, the shares among different additive share rings are naturally reused, and there is no need to do de-randomization. In particular, it is known that there exists a linear and strong T-wise independent PRG that uses tails of all of T random bits. Now we discuss how to compute each must bit. For an addition gate, suppose the two input share rings are W1 and W2, and the goal is to compute the output share ring W3. We only need to compute W3, X, or R3 since the rest of shares are just the input random bits of the PRG. Observe that W3XRR3 is equal to W1XRW2XRR3. Therefore, we only need to compute the summation of bits in the joint size of the sharing of W1, the sharing of W2, and the support of R3. This problem can be solved by using a leakage tolerate XR gadget. For a multiplication gate, similarly, we only need to compute W3XRR3. We follow NSWO3 and first compute multiplications between every two shares, one from each input additive sharing. Then W3 is equal to the summation of these multiplication results. Similarly to the addition gate, to compute W3XRR3, we can compute the summation of these in the joint side of the outer product between the share rings of W1 and W2 and the support of R3. Again, this problem can be solved by a leakage tolerate XR gadget. Therefore, our other construction works as follows. We use a linear and strong T-wise independent PRG to protect the var values. Then the goal is to compute the max bit WIXRI, where RI is the S output bit of the PRG. We show that the computation of the max var values can be done by using a leakage tolerate XR gadget. In the next part, I will discuss how we construct leakage tolerate XR gadgets. What we want to construct is a leakage tolerate private circuit that computes the XR function of N input bits. We start with the following simple construction. Assume the XR gadget has access to a random additive sharing of zero, say they are R1 to R4. We mask each input bit Xi by Ri and let Gi denote the results. Then we use an addition circuit to compute the XR of G1 to G4. Intuitively, the security follows from the fact that G1 to G4 forms a random additive sharing of the output bit y. Therefore, if any inner wire is probed, the simulator can probe the output, output bit y and generate a random additive sharing as g1 to g4. Then the simulator can simulate all inner wires in the circuit. In other words, probing inner wires of the gadget is not better than probing the output bit. However, this simple construction requires out of n random bits, we need to de-randomize the basic construction. As we have discussed, the generic approach that relies on random locality does not work. This requires us to find a new approach to de-randomize R1 to Rn. Our starting point is the following simple observation. For a set W of T where values, we hope that the random bits R1 to Rn satisfy the following condition. The distribution of values in W when instantiated by using R1 to Rn is identical to that when instantiated by using uniformly random additive sharing of zero. In this way, any of those rates that can only probe T wires cannot distinguish these two instantiations. To better understand this condition, we first write down the inner wires of the circuit. Suppose the addition circuit first computes G1 XRG2, G3 XRG4, and then computes the 
the output bit. Recall that each GI is equal to XI, X or RI, where XI is an input bit and RI is a random bit. We can write down all the variable values as follows. These variable values are marked by the following random values. For the first layer, G1 is marked by R1, G2 is marked by R2, and so on. For the second layer, G1 XR G2 is marked by R1 XR R2, G3 XR G4 is marked by R3 XR R4. For the last layer, the summation of G1 to G4 is marked by summation of R1 to R4, which is equal to zero. We define a set A that contains these masked random values and refer to this set as an access set. Now we obtain the following condition. For a set W of T variables in the access set A, we want that the distribution of values in W when instantiated by using R1 to Rn is identical to that when instantiated by using a uniformly random additive sharing of zero. To realize such a sufficient condition, we consider to use a pseudo-random generator to prepare R1 to Rn. With more details, we define the notion of robust parity sharing generators. We say an implementation C of a function G is a robust parity sharing generator with respect to an access set A if it satisfies the following three conditions. First, the output of the circuit should form an additive sharing of zero. That is, the summation of output Bs is equal to zero. This condition ensures the correctness of the basic construction. Second, we require the circuit C to be secure against proving attacks in the leakage tolerance sense. In this way, we only need to focus on the output bits since any probing attack towards the implementation can be reduced to a probing attack to the output bits. Finally, for the given access set, which consists of R1 to Rn and linear combinations of R1 to Rn, we require that the distribution of any T variables when instantiated by R1 to Rn should be identical to that when instantiated by using uniformly random additive sharing of zero. The notion of robust parity sharing generators can be viewed as an extension of the robust T-wise independent PRG introduced in IKL plus 13. First, we require the output bits to satisfy that their summation is zero. Second, an adversary can access to the output bits by learning not only a single output bit, but also a linear combination specified by the access set. If the access set only contains the output bits, a robust parity sharing generator degrees to a robust T-wise independent PRG. In our work, we use the probabilistic method to show the existence of a robust parity sharing generator, which uses out of t times log t n random bits when the size of the access site is bounded by out of n. Combining the basic instructions for the XR gadget and a robust parity sharing generator, we obtain a leakage tolerate XR gadget which computes XR of n bits and uses the same number of random bits. An omitted problem is that if we use fresh randomness for each XR gadget, the randomness complexity will become linear in the circuit size. To overcome this issue, our solution is to use a single PRG to repair random bits for all XR gadgets. We refer to the new PRG as multi-phase robust parity sharing generator. Let me give a quick summary of our results and the main techniques. In this work, our main contribution is the construction of private circuits that uses out of t times log t as random bits. To achieve our results, we first give an outer construction where we use a strong t wise independent PRG to protect variable values. We show that the problem of computing the marked variable values can be reduced to constructing leakage tolerate XR gadgets. 
then we focus on constructing randomly sufficient leakage tolerant XR gauges. We start with a simple construction, which requires a linear number of random bits in the input size. To de randomize the basic construction, we give a new sufficient condition for the random source. We introduce a new notion of PRG, robust parity sharing generators, to prepare the random source required by our new sufficient condition. By using the probabilistic method, we prove the existence of a robust parity sharing generator that uses tails of out of t random bits. Combining the outer construction and the inner construction, we obtain our main result. Thank you. Uh, it's Vipul or you are okay. So if there are if there are questions, we have one of the authors here, Yuval. If not, then thanks for attending this session and uh, see you later.